Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Art 196, Computer Graphics with Adobe Illustrator um, <clears throat> for the spring semester 2022. Today, what I had in mind is to give you a brief demonstration on how to approach the mask assignment. When you completed a handful <clears throat> of lessons and um, first maybe five, if you want to go to the sixth lesson or so, you can. Um, some of you are already kind of moving forward very quickly with that, but you know, make sure that you feel comfortable, you know, working in Illustrator, then get started with that. But um, I want to show you a couple of different ways of um, starting the assignment. Okay. So if there aren't any questions, um, get started here. Um, let me go ahead and show you how I would approach it. The first thing is, is that um, Illustrator was originally designed to be um, a tool for mechanical drawings. It's not a sketching tool, although you can use it as such, it was not designed to do that. So typically you need some sort of basic sketch or something from which that you then work in Illustrator to create your finished drawing. So if you wanna work from one of your own sketches, be my guest. If you wanna work from your sketches and combine it with um, images or that you've used off the internet, photographic images, be my guest. If you wanna work entirely from images from the internet, that's fine too. Or if you wanna take your own photographs, I don't mind. Um, the goal is to understand the process of making an illustration an illustrator. And it really is pretty much um, like if you were to create an illustration in using construction paper, what would that look like? Okay, you'd have to cut out basic shapes and layer them on top of one another. And in the end, you know, you would have um, an illustration that looks pretty much like these masks, okay? Um, as we get more involved with Illustrator, you'll see that um, you'll have more control over gradients and pattern fills and all sorts of things that will um, uh, allow you to make more complex, more realistic looking illustrations, but I don't think you'll ever um, I think that these illustrations that you make are um, um, anything like a photograph, okay? They'll come close, they'll be like stylized photographs, but they'll never um, be photographic in nature. So um, anyway, the first one, if you just do, you know, this is where I got an image for all of you, um, is that if you just simply do a Google search, and you look under cultural masks um, and, and then look under images, there's just slew, a slew of them. So pick one that you like, um, pick one that the ones that work best are the ones that are frontal. If they're at a three quarter view or something, um, save that for another time. Um, you can work on as simple an illustration as you feel, you know, work on a degree of, um, difficulty that you feel comfortable. If you want to tackle something complex, be my guest. If you feel that you need to work on something very basic, then that's okay too. But as you're building them or making them or whatever term you want to use, um, they can be worked and reworked and they can gradually get more and more complex. Um, so if we look at one of these, for example, I just click on one. This is a basic one constructed of geometric shapes a very basic mask, okay? Um, that I think is beautiful in its design. Um, it's one that would be worthwhile pursuing, okay? And giving it a try. So I'm gonna show you how I do that today. The first thing that you need to do is when you found an image to download it. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on it and just say, save mask as, and then it will save it to my hard drive. And I've already done so. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll close it. It's pretty basic. Um, and then what you need to do 
is create a new file in Illustrator. And that's something that I've already started. So just go to File New. Um, you want it for print. So it'll be at 300 pixels per inch that, it, that it's printed. But we're, even though we're not printing them, um, but you want it a high resolution. Um, <clears throat> and also, what we want to do is that decide what format, whether you want vertical or horizontal. And that can be changed at any time. Okay. If you discover later on that, you know what, really the horizontal format would be the way to go. Then if we go ahead and we switch over here to the artboard tool, I can switch right here to horizontal. It's that easy. Now it just changes the board. It will not change your illustration. And so you'll have to rotate it accordingly. So I'm going to go back to portrait because I'm happy with that at the moment. What I need to do now is we're going to be working with layers a little bit. That's this panel right here. <clears throat> and what I want to do is I want to download that, that image and put it in, in the background um, for our, of our Illustrator file. So I'm going to go to File, Place, right here. Um, place is the uh, equivalent of import. And it should go directly to, let's see, I don't know which one I have here. I got, I downloaded a couple of them. I think it's the first one here. I'll go ahead and I'll find out which one it is. But anyway, I saved it there. And then as you hover over, I can click. And there it is. It's way, way, way too large, but that's okay. Because we're gonna go ahead and shrink it down. <clears throat> the paper size that I'm using is eight and a half by 11 it's letter size. So to, to reduce this in size, I simply move the cursor over one of the corners, hold down the shift and the option key on the Macintosh or the alt key on the PC. And I click and I drag to reduce it in size a little bit. Okay. And then we can go ahead and I can tab, move it over. And I'm kind of fanatic about getting things centered. And then if I want to move it later on, I can. Now it's not quite ready for us to work, um, to work on. What I want to do is I want to turn this into what is called a template. Um, before I do though, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this layer because I want to show you a couple of different ways of working. And I'll turn that top layer off. To turn this into a template, um, on, it's a layer on which you can draw, uh, uh, that you'll draw on top of, and all the, the layers on top of it will be like drawing on um, tracing paper. So I'm going to double click on it, and it brings it up, and I'll call this template. Okay, and if I click the little template, notice what it does. It will dim the image to 50%. If you want it dimmed more than 50%, you have control over that. It locks the layer, it makes it visible, and you can always turn the visibility of it off if you want, which is helpful sometimes. And it deselects the print option. So I'll click OK, you'll watch it tint a little bit, so we still can see details, but we can no longer draw on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw on a layer on top of that. So I'm going to create a brand new layer, and I'm going to move it to the top of my stack here. Now this will be our drawing layer. So I'll go ahead and I'll click inside here to rename the layer just so I know what it is. I'll call it drawing. Okay. But the reason that we're doing that is because if you're not careful, that image that we brought in, you can accidentally click and drag it and move it around. But as you can see, um, it's locked. I can't click or, or do anything to this. I can't select it until I unlock it. And then when I unlock it, you can see that I can now move it around. Okay, so I'll leave it locked. It's on the template layer, and now I'm ready to work. Okie doke. So, my recommendation is that just as if you were working with um, several sheets of construction paper, how would you build this? I would build it from the back forward. 
okay? Um, use as many layers as you feel you need to. Um, for right now, I'll use a couple. And then, again, I don't have any planned attack on this. Um, I just downloaded this a few minutes ago, and it looked like a simple, straightforward one for us to get going with. And we'll we'll see how it go, how it works. Um, anyway, I'm going to start. And since the background image is a simple circle, that's what I'm going to start with. And um, so I'll use the ellipse tool. Now, to use the ellipse tool, um, typically you can click and drag diagonally, and that will make your ellipse. Okay. I'm going to work, I like working from the center outward. So I'm going to hold down the option or alt key and the shift key because I want it to be a perfect circle. I'm going to drag it out until it approximates the size of the background shape. And I'm going to go ahead and move it into position. And that's pretty darn close. I can use my arrows to nudge into place. And I'm good with that. Now, it's clearly covered everything up. So what I want to do is I want to take, and I'm going to leave it as an outline, but I'm going to change it to our default, black and white. I'm going to make sure that the fill is removed. So if I can do that from here, or I can do it over here. So here, if I click on um, fill, I can go ahead and I can turn that off. But I can leave the stroke. And the stroke is every shape that you create has both stroke and it has fill options. So that's the first step. Now what we can do is we can either take that um, shape because there are a series of, of concentric circles in here and we can build those as well. So what if I, let's go ahead and try and make, um, there's a variety of ways to do this. I'm going to let this go for the moment, these little shapes out here, but they would be really nice to work with. Um, I'm going to start the next concentric circle here and then start to build some of the basic shapes for the eyes and that sort of thing. <clears throat> then maybe lock that layer down <clears throat> and work on some of the interior shapes. <clears throat> and when I start doing that, Excuse me. <clears throat> I'll probably need to use the um, this tool here, which is the shape builder tool to combine them together. So let's start in here. And that one's there. So I'm going to go ahead and twirl down on this drawing layer. And I'm going to lock this just so I don't accidentally move it. And you can see that there's a very subtle outline. If I want to take that ellipse and make the outline a little bolder for the time being, I can do that. So I'll select it. And instead of a one point rule, we can go ahead and make it a two point rule. So you can just see it a little bit easier. Okay. And I'll go ahead and I'll lock that down. Now let's go ahead and draw on top of that. And also, just to let you know, that the shapes that you create in Illustrator, typically there are tools that allow you to um, work in a slightly different mode, but every time you create a new shape, it automatically layers on <clears throat> the, the last one, layers on top of the last one. Unless you specify under the mode over here, down here, it allows us to draw in modes. It's this little button down here, draw normal, draw behind, or we can draw inside shapes, which is really very powerful. So <clears throat> let's go ahead with the next one in here. Okay. So I'll go ahead and again, and actually maybe what I want to do is I want to take this layer that's locked and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a copy of it because they're all concentric circles. So I could make one from scratch or I could make one that exists already, you know, that and, and use it as a guide. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll select it. And I'll make Command C to copy it. Does it have to be done this way? Nope. I'm going to lock it back down. I'm going to go ahead and um, automatically draw directly on top. So now what I can do is I can edit and I can paste in front. 
So now I have an exact duplicate of that. So now what I can do is I can hold down the shift and the option key, move over the corner and I can shrink it down like so. Okay. And now what I can do is I can change the thickness of that. And I can change the color of it. I can change, but I try to make all the shapes first and then I'll go back and I will colorize each of them. So now what I can do <clears throat> with that one made, I can go ahead and I can change the thickness of the stroke because it looks like there's a gradient in here, but we can add a gradient later. So when you get to that, you can add that. I don't know that we'll get to that today, but I can go ahead now <clears throat> and I can um, increase the size of the thickness so that it's the size pretty much of the, the width that we have back there. Okay, and if I want to change the color of it, because it is a stroke, I can click here. Um, if you feel that, you know, you'd be better working with some of the colors at the time that you're making, you know, make, making the shapes, and by all means, do so. If you want to fill it with a gradient, you can do that. And when we get to the gradients, we can do that. Now, again, <clears throat> this um, is covering up some of our other shapes. So that's not working for me. So what I need to do is let's back up here. Let's make it a little bit thinner. Like so that looks pretty good. And I'm going to, for the time being, I'll go ahead and I'll lock it. And I'm gonna turn it off because I don't need it for the moment. What I do wanna do though, is I wanna make some other shapes that will allow me to draw in, inside the one that I just made. So I'll paste them inside. So we can start with a mouth, we can start with the eyes, um, we can start with these interior shapes. But probably what I want to do is I want to, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and work with ellipses again. And I'm going to make some of these shapes for the eyes. So let's go ahead and move this in position. Come on. Oops. Okay. And maybe I want it to be slightly um, at an angle. So I'll go ahead and I'll change that a little bit. And that looks pretty good. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch the color back to black. <clears throat> Now I need one on the other side, don't I? Well, one of the things that I could do is I can bring up rulers, which would probably be a help. That would be Command R. Come on, deselect that Command R. And that brings up rulers, but they're set in pixels. So I need to change that to inches. So under Illustrator Preferences, I'm gonna go to Units and I'm gonna switch the rulers from points two inches. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to put a guideline in the middle of this so that when I mirror this, it will be exactly the opposite. And so what we're going to do is since this is pretty symmetrical um, with some of the images or some of the elements that I'm going to create, I can go ahead and I can um, make them on one side and mirror them and flip them on the other. In other instances, maybe I'll go ahead and I'll do that. And I'll, at the same time, I'll copy some others and I'll join them together to make a more complex shape for ourselves. So <clears throat> we'll start with this one. This is the circle. And um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring out a guideline for ourselves right here. So to bring out guidelines, they come from the top and the left side. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And I like having my guides on a separate layer all together. <clears throat> so I'm going to create a brand new layer and I'll name it guides. It's just my preference. It doesn't matter. It's a way of helping me to organize my illustrations. And typically, I'm not that organized. 
I mean, I am organized to a point, but when I get in the midst of working on something, all that organization and, and uh, goes out the window. Um, it makes sense to me because I'm working on it, but to explain to you or someone else, maybe not the case. So um, I'll go ahead and I'll bring that guide line, guide, guide line out again, bring it out in the center. Okay, and deselect. Okay, so it's it's locked in there. And I can go ahead and I can lock guides if I want, so I don't accidentally move them. And now I need to go back to the, the ellipse that I have here, select it. And now what I wanna do is I wanna make a copy of it. So I'm gonna go over to, to the left here and we have under the this tool right here, it's right below the eraser tool. I can use, instead of rotate, I can use reflect. Now this is a two-step process. What I want to do is I want to hold down the option or alt key, click right here where the center line is and click. Now <clears throat> you can see that it's mirroring it across the, the vertical axis. If I want it across the horizontal, I can do that. Or if I want a specific angle, I can do that. Now that just gives me a copy or, or um, it just mirrors that single image. But if I want to make a copy of it, and make use of the, the tools that I have to um, duplicate it, I'll just click copy instead. So now I've duplicated it. They're identically the same size, but mirror images. So that works very nicely. Now, maybe one of the other things that I can do is that, you know, I'm gonna make these rectangles in here, okay? So I probably should have done that from the beginning. So let me go ahead and undo that loop that. And let's go ahead and this time because the rectangles are inside of the circle, um, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So as I'm you know working on this, I'm trying to think aloud for all of you. Um, there's a texture pattern that we can either you know use or create on our own. Um, this could become a textured pattern that we can make um, for the beads. There's a whole variety of different ways of doing this. Um, but again, it doesn't have to look exactly like the photograph. Again, that's where your creativity um, comes into play. So what I'm gonna do, because I want this rectangle to be inside the circle, I need to now, with the circle selected, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna select draw inside. And you can't see on my screen, but when you do this on yours, there's a little broken line, dotted line around the exterior that lets me know that I'm drawing inside there. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna select a rectangle instead of the, the ellipse. And I don't need that big fat stroke. It only needs to be um, one point stroke maybe or two, okay. And that's a good starting point. But what I want to do, because these aren't perfect um, rectangles, I want to edit individual anchor points. So now what I'll do is I'm going to, with that selected, I'm going to switch to the direct selection tool, deselect, and now I'm going to select individual points. So come on. I can click here and I can move them individually. Okay, so that I get this little, you know, I can follow the shape pretty darn, you know, close, closely. Okay, so notice that it's inside, even though this overlaps, that's pretty nice. Um, the other thing that I can do is when I go back to here, let's see if I can't, no, it won't allow me to, because I changed it, it won't allow me to, to um, round that corner, but there's another way that I can do that. What I can do is I can select with the direct selection tool, select this point right here. And because all of these are corner points, maybe I want the corner here to be rounded. So to do that under the pen tool, this is something that's in, in other lessons down the road. 
Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say anchor point tool, and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag just to round it out just a little bit, give it a little bit of a curve. Now let's go back to select. I'm done selecting, and now it's a little bit curved right there. So now I'm ready to take the shape and I'm ready to go ahead and switch back from um, draw inside to draw normal. I'm going to select the whole shape and let's see if I can't mirror this again. So let's use the mirror tool and hopefully it will mirror the contents as well. And if it doesn't, then I got a problem. Whoops. Hold down the option key, click there. And there you go. So you can see that the original mask was not absolutely symmetrical. So I'm just using it as a guide. If I want to take that shape and move it, I can. I mean, I can go ahead and, and move it now, but it won't be absolutely symmetrical. And maybe for design purposes, it will look a little bit more interesting if it is, in fact, symmetrical rather than try to make it look realistic. So let's go ahead and um, let's zoom out and let's try to, you know, I'm kind of going about this in a, in a haphazard fashion here. But um, now maybe I do want to try to attack these shapes back here. Okay. So there is a, a tool that we have for that that will allow me to, to make that. So what I can do is I can go back and I can make sure that I have layers here. I'm going to take these two shapes and I'm going to lock them. These are both of the eyes. Um, and again, you have to remember which ones you're locking and which ones you aren't, because then you have to go back and unlock when you're ready to manipulate them again. So I'm going to go back down here to this one. And I'm going to draw on top of it. So I'm going to go ahead. I need to create a new. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and since I can't work on that, I need to create a new sub layer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I want to copy. I'm going to copy this to this one here, the one that's hidden. Okay. So I'll make a copy of it like so. And I have a copy of it. It's also locked, but I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to unlock it. And now what I want to do is I'm going to probably substitute this with another tool, with another um, uh, I'll, I'll probably draw. What am I going to do? I'm thinking aloud here. I'm thinking aloud. So let's try this. One of the things that I want to do is I want to, hmm. there's a, um, a shape tool that allows us to make what are called stars. And so let me work on this new layer here. And um, I'm going to take the stroke and I'm going to make it instead of two point, I'm going to make it um, one. Okay. So let's go back in here and make sure that it's selected. No, come on. Uh, uh, uh. There we go. So instead of 12 point, sorry. I'm going to make it just one point. And so I can see it better. Um, maybe I do need to make it two point. There we go. So one of the things that I can do is I can make a shape out here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and make a little triangle shape. So again, we can work with a star or we can um, Let's try the star and I can't make it draw inside. No, I'd have to do that. I'm going to do it a little differently. See, I, as I'm working here, I'm thinking a little bit differently here. I'm going to work with a background layer. 
here, this one, and I'm, let's turn this one on. Let's turn that one off. I'm going to unlock this one, and I'm going to draw inside of this one. And I'm going to use the star shape. And I'm going to try to find the center of this. And with smart guides, I should be able to find the center of this shape pretty easily. So let's go ahead and select it. And it's right here. Okay. So if I come back over here to the star tool, I can go ahead and click in here. And I want to switch to make sure that I'm drawing inside. And there is the center. So I'll hold down the Option, Shift key, and I'm going to pull it out like so. Now, I want this to, I'm going to get it so that it touches the edges here, just inside that. I can always make it larger. And I'm going to go ahead and I want to, no, undo. Let me undo, let's do that again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hold down the Option, Shift, and find the center again. Like so. And now what I need to do is I need to hit the up button. So I have as many stars as I need. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the option key and notice how it, um, it goes out to the shape that I want. So again, this doesn't mirror exactly what's down there, but it's pretty darn close. So I'll go ahead and I'll turn this, I'll go ahead and I'll release the mouse. And we can go ahead and I can fill it just to see what it's gonna look like. I'll fill it with um, um, a gray color, maybe a gray. Okay, so you can see how things are starting to come together. And if I need to rotate this, if I feel I needed another point on the star, I could have done that. I could come back here again. And um, now notice that it's covering up the, um, the whites in here. So I may have to do something a little bit different with that. Or I need to take the shapes that are here and fill, and fill them with white. I can either poke holes in them or I can do... Um, I can either fill them with different colors. So let's go ahead and I've got this one selected. Um, let's go ahead and turn on some of the others that are not there. So that's there. We got that. Um, I can also take, I'm probably ready to take this background color here. because I have the clipping mask. Um, let's go ahead and take this color, this shape here. There we go. And I don't want this to be filled inside anymore. Got to remember to turn that off. It's easy to forget. And now let's go ahead and see if I can't fill this with a color. Um, so I have a question mark for the fill. I want maybe a reddish tan color for, the, um, for that. And that's working pretty nicely. But notice that it covered up the gray. So now we have these other issues. So that needs to be, I need to send that to the back or I need to bring this shape that's inside it to the front. So as, as you're working with these, you're constantly, you know, reevaluating, you're deciding, what do I bring to the forward? What do I send to back? What do I hide? What do I lock? What do I group together? And so on and so forth until you can, you know, you put this jigsaw puzzle together. So what I'm going to try to do, um, just since I have that shape done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back again to, um, I can't draw inside. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at the shape because um, I have a clipping mask here. Let's see if I turn that off. That's what I want there, but that's in front. So what is this one? That's this one. So I'm going to put this one behind it. And hopefully this one, um, I said I made it gray. 
So let's look at the shape again. And let's try that again. I have the fill, it turned um, tan, but let's make it gray again and see if that works. And now it's working for me. So it's working beautifully. Um, you know, layering these things correctly. Okay, so let's go back and lock some of these up again <clears throat> and turn off. Actually, while I'm working on some of this, what I can do is I can um, lock some of the layers and I can turn off their visibility and I can work on some of the other parts. So I'm gonna lock them up and turn off the visibility. So maybe I wanna work on the mouth now. So the mouth is sort of like a rectangle. So let's go ahead and work with that. So I'm gonna come back over here, instead of a star shape, I'm gonna select the rectangle tool and I'm gonna click and drag like so. And let's try to get it to the basic proportions that I need. Okie doke. And I'm gonna make sure that the fill is none so I can see through. Um, where do we have this? Let's go ahead and select none. So I can either make this two shapes or I can make it one shape with one big thick stroke. So for right now, I'm gonna try a big thick stroke for this. Why not? And now it needs to be reconfigured. So it's a little bit, it's because the bottom shape is not a rectangle, it's slightly rounded at the bottom. So now what I need to do is I need to select the direct selection tool, okay? And I probably need to, let's go ahead and under the pen tool instead, I'm going to, come on, no, 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 pen tool, pen, 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 there we go, up here. Um, I'm gonna add anchor point. And I'm gonna go ahead and right here, I'm gonna add an anchor point. And now with the direct selection tool, what I can do is I can pull this down And actually, I probably should take away, um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command Y to take away the, um, uh, the preview. And now what I wanna do is I wanna make this a little bit rounded, but I'm gonna turn that back into a rounded. Now notice that some of these shapes have, see how they're rounded? So I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna pull this back down here. Let's do that again. Notice how it's automatically rounding it for me. Really, really nice. I can take the direct selection tool now. I can move the points around. I can select this point. I can select, pull down the shift key, select this point, and I can move them up here like so. Actually, let me undo that. So let's deselect, select this point, hold down the shift key, select this point. Now let's go ahead and move it up. No, I don't want to do it like that. So uh, not having much luck here. I'm going to click on one, move it up like so. Click on this one. So now it's going to be kind of out of, it's not going to be entirely symmetrical anymore. But again, I want that slightly rounded. So I'll click on this little button in the middle here and round it. Click on this one, make it a little bit rounded until I get the basic shape that I'm going for. I can also come back here and let, with the direct selection tool, select this point and I can round it like so. I can click on this point and round it like so. And now I've got the shape that I've, I'm going for. So now if I hit Command Y, I have the shape that I was looking for. So we can you know, leave it black, I can lock it, I can do what I want and continue with this. Now, one of the things that I said when you're, when you're working with this, 
the shapes. Um, let's turn them back on, all the colors back on here. Um, see where I'm at with everything. So you'll want to do that periodically. Okay. So now this one, the, the mouth that is um, um, an empty shape, I'm going to go ahead and if I select it, I probably want to make it, you know, another color. So it's locked. So I need to unlock, remember to unlock it, select the shape. And let's give it a fill. And it is layered on the top. So I probably want it a really dark gray. So it covers the other shape underneath. I'm, I'm probably going to want, remember I said that the eyes need to be able to be selected. So I need to select those. So let's use the direct select tool, or because it is technically a group, we might be able to use the group selection tool and I can select this here. Is it gonna allow me to select it or not? I might have to go inside that shape or let's go ahead because the shape is in fact a clipping mask. I can come down here and then within the layers and I can twirl and I can select it. So let's select the shape from here. So the layers panel can be very um, useful, but I need to unlock it. That's why I couldn't select it. So now if I go back with the group selection tool, it allows me to select it. That's why I couldn't select it before. I forgot to unlock it. So let's select both of these. Oh, I that one has to be unlocked too. So let's unlock that. Okay, now let's go back here and instead of no fill, let's fill it with white. And select it. Okay, so it's coming together quite nicely. I probably wanna turn off the preview and probably the next step that I'm gonna take is to create some of those fill shapes. Um, and we'll have to figure out an order for that. Um, that will take us about to the end of our day, but I hope this gives you an idea of how to get started with it. Um, you can always add patterns, you can add gradients, you can add um, a variety of other filled images and, and textures to make your image even more interesting. You can vary the width of, of the um, strokes, you can do all sorts of things that add inter you know, interest and depth and um, to your piece. So I'm gonna turn off preview and I wanna show you a pretty nifty tool here. Um, this won't be exactly like the, um, the one that, that's underneath, but it will give you an idea of what, what I'm thinking that we can do. Um, one of the things that we can do is that I wanna create this really intricate pattern of um, shapes here with the beads. So there's a variety of ways that we can do that. Um, I'm gonna start by using just generic shapes for the moment, but I think there are probably better ways of approaching that. And maybe on Thursday, I'll think about doing it a little bit differently. So to start with, I'm gonna go ahead and um, making sure that everything is locked here so that I don't accidentally draw on it. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and on top of my drawing layer, I'm going to create one more layer just to draw these patterns on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, and it looks like there's a lot of ellipses here. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the ellipse tool. And I'm going to move over the center. And I'm gonna make, hold down the option key, and I'm gonna make an ellipse right here. I'm going to <clears throat> make an ellipse up here. And I'm gonna rotate it like so. And I'm gonna stretch it like so. So I don't think I'll have time to complete this today, but you'll get the basic idea of what I'm going for here. I'm gonna change the configuration of it. And then I want this to make a duplicate of this, or I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mirror it. 
just like I had done before. So I'll go ahead and hold down Option key, um, click in the middle with the Option, and there, copy it. So there we go. We have another one there. So let's start with these shapes. I'm going to hit Command Y to bring them together. So those are the shapes, and they probably need to be inside one of the other shapes or layered differently. But as you can see, there are three different shapes. But maybe I want them all to be one. So to do that, I need to select them all. Oops, make sure that I have the selection tool. I select them all. And now what I have is the shape builder tool here. And now I can click and drag across all of them. And now they all become one shape. Now what I can do, which is also pretty nifty, <clears throat> is that I can take that shape and this would be another way of making the beads, is that I can take this and I can reduce the shape, the, the size of it. So I'll go ahead and I'll make a copy of it, Command C, and I'm gonna go ahead and edit, paste in front. And now I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit. This may not work the way I have planned, but we'll see. So I'm going to leave it like this for the time being and move it up just a little bit. <clears throat> and what I want to do is I want to blend this shape with this one and see what happens. I'm just curious to get those individual strokes. So I'm going to select this one and I'm going to select this one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the blend tool down here. And I'm going to click from here to here. And now I need to double click on the blend tool. Because right now it's smooth shapes and you're not gonna see anything, but maybe instead of smooth color, I can use specified steps. And instead of one, we can select maybe six, eight, 10. I'll select eight just to see. And those are all those interior shapes that we were looking at. So that could be pretty cool. So you can see there's a, a wide variety of ways of making things in here. I'm just getting started. I started with the basics and now by using these tools, I'm making them more and more complex and more intricate. Um, what we can also do is we can vary the, um, the stroke of these shapes. We can um, do a variety of things in here. So let's hit Command Y again. So that would be equivalent to using those beads in here, but maybe I'm using a different kind of pattern. So that would be one thing that you could do, or you could leave them individual shapes that are overlapped, or I can fill each of these with different shapes using the fill um, uh, shape tool. Um, you can, another thing that's kind of nice too, let me go back here and um, I just want to preview the star shape that I have back here. So I think it's this one. Let's click in here. Um, command Y. So yeah, that's there. <laughs> Let's turn off some of the other ones. Okay. So I want, maybe I want these strokes up here inside to be a little bit more um, brush-like. Well, we have a brush tool. So I can come over here and I'm gonna select the brush tool. Okay. And over here we have, um, let's close, oh, I'm gonna pull this off for a minute. I wanna be able to see layers. Um, let's look at brushes here. So here's our brush tool. And you can see here some default brushes. Well, maybe I want it, I want to be able to work with it <coughs> and create something that looks more like chalk or in a brush shape. So it's telling me I can't work on that layer because it's locked. I can either draw inside if I know that I want it inside the shape or, um, Whoops, let's go ahead. I thought I unlocked it. 
Maybe I locked the whole shape. Oh, 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 that's um. Let's see. So the shape, because I had all of them in there, they're unlocked. This one is visible. Let's unlock it. There we go. <clears throat> and I want all the others locked. I'll turn that one off. So now I can use the brush tool and I can click and drag. And you can see that it looks a little bit more natural. And this would be a good place to go ahead and do them by hand because you don't want them all uniform. You want them each to be a little bit different. And before you know it, you know, you go around the horn here and we create all of these and create the, um, Okay, so I think you get the picture. <clears throat> if not, please let me know. So let's turn on the rest of the shapes. Okay, now you can see that <clears throat> this red ring is above these shapes here. Well, they need to be below it. So I need to readjust my layers again. Um, you know, this can look really geometric. I can come back and I could change, <clears throat> maybe I could change this one, this shape here. That's still locked, I presume. Let's unlock this shape. Let's select it. And maybe I want it filled with this shape. So it has a more brush like appeal. And I'm getting the contrast between strictly very tight geometric and something that's a little bit more <clears throat> um, natural looking or hand drawn. The other thing that we can do too is that we can fill, um, for example, if I go back and let's um, unlock both of these eyes and if i take this shape are they still locked they're still locked so i'm going to select that shape and maybe i can fill it with a pattern and then that will be it for today um let's go back under fill and let's pick a pattern here There we go, there's a pattern. But again, notice that it's covering this shape up. So I need to, again, adjust my layers again. If I select, you know, select the shape inside, um, notice that it came to the, to the front. So I need to make sure that this is um, inside it. So I'll move this up here. Uh, it's not working here. So there we go, I've reached a point where I'm having issues with that that I need to, to tweak. So in here, select that and let's um, make sure that I have the fill for that. Maybe there is no fill for this shape right here. Oh, come on. select it. Um, oh, see, I accidentally gave it a fill. There we go. So now I've fixed it. Okay, so it's, you know, slowly but surely coming together. So this will take you, you know, a while to build and decide on what you want to do and how complex you want to make <clears throat> your illustrations. Um, and if I may, let's go back really quick um, to my website. And here is, let's look at a couple of examples again of masks. So here's one, very intricate, very detailed, beautiful pattern background, beautiful gradients, you name it. Here's one that's a little bit more stylized, but interesting. 
you know, nonetheless. Here's one where um, Jordan combined different photographs and joined them together to create a unique mask. This one is highly stylized, very flat, two-dimensional um, by Charles. He did that really, really nice approach. So that's another technique that you can employ. Here's a more traditional, um, I believe, I don't know whether it's Japanese or not, mask. Very symmetrical. So again, you only have to build half of it, mirror the other half and you're done. Here's one that's unique, okay? Has kind of a, a Viking kind of look to it. And this one is very abstract, but really cool nevertheless by Catherine. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So I'll, I'll leave you on that note. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and ask if there are any questions from anybody. And if there are, please raise your hand or ask to speak, and then we'll call it a day. By Thursday, I'll probably continue with this, maybe go over some of the, the lessons that you should be covering. And I'll just go over some of the basic tools so you understand how to use them. Um, it's for right now, it's, it's all of you getting the lay of the land, understanding where everything is, what each of the tools do, and then it's up to you to, to use them in a creative fashion. Okay. <clears throat> um, use these as guides. You don't have to be a copy of them, but that's pretty much it. No questions from anybody? No? Oh, okay. Jaren, sure. Um, did you, here, let me pause the recording for a second.